And we're back everybody, what's going on? Welcome to the Shady Gray Explained video. Hope you guys are ready for this one. This one was really highly requested from you guys and it was super dope to record this. I think you're gonna enjoy it. But let's get into one of the craziest Backrooms levels. Backrooms Explained, the Shady Gray. After weeks of y'all asking, I'm finally gonna do it. Let's get into it. The Shady Gray is classified as class undetermined and is a collection of extremely unstable sublevels that are really rare and hard to get to. All of the levels are colored in a grayscale black and white format, and the environments inside of the sublevels are extremely dangerous and very, very unstable. Meg has sent multiple agents to this level to explore its sublevels to try to get more information about it, but only one has come back alive. There are eight confirmed sublevels that have been discovered so far, but there might be more than that, we don't know. And not all eight of them are documented. Only five of them are documented, so we're gonna get into them right now. The first sublevel is level 00, zero or Z0, zero, but I'm not gonna say Z0 zero because level 0 sounds better. And this is the most stable part of the Shady Gray. It's the only sublevel that you can actually explore without really much danger being there. That is, as long as you escape it before nighttime. This sublevel looks like a jungle, but it's black and white, just like all the other sublevels. And the trees here are really glitched and they're glitched inside of each other most times. But besides that and the black and white color scheme, the level is pretty stable. So level zero is where you actually enter the shady gray level at. You'll wake up in the shack you see on the screen right now in the middle of the jungle there. This specific sublevel has a day-night cycle of about 12 hours, but it doesn't gradually change from day to night like it does in real life. Instead, it instantly changes like a light switch being turned on or off. This is really dangerous and I'll explain why later. But the reason I was saying that the area is somewhat safe is because during the day there are no, like none, no entities here at all. But at nighttime, the level gets flooded with them. When it does get nighttime, all the light immediately goes away and it gets so dark that you can't even see your hand right in front of you. Also flashlights and stuff don't work here either. You'll start to hear howlers howling in the distance about five minutes into the darkness. And this is the last chance you have to get out of there before you're just toast. Now the entities that are actually here are unknown since they can't be seen, since it's you know pitch black, but it's theorized that they have night vision so they can hunt down wanderers easily. During the daytime in the sub level, you can see lakes and rivers that are full of almond water but when it turns nighttime those same lakes and rivers turn into liquid pain somehow even if you put the almond water in a bottle from the lake it'll turn to liquid pain at nighttime you can get to the next sublevel below this one by getting a branch and drawing in the mud this will open up the floor and you'll fall directly into the next part the next sublevel is called level one this is a very unstable area that looks like a black and white mansion when you fall into this mansion, you'll be in the lobby part of it, and you'll notice that the furniture here is really glitchy, and it's really just distorted. If you touch the furniture, it'll cause your body to start glitching and distort you on an atomic level, so don't do that. Other than the glitchy furniture, this level is just a grayscaled mansion. But there is one entity here, and it's very dangerous. He's known as the Landlord, and he wears a suit and a fedora, and is always carrying around a briefcase with him. If the landlord sees you, he'll start walking towards you, and if you run away, all the exit doors will instantly be closed and locked. When he gets to you, he will unalive you for trespassing, loser. There's been some reports of people being able to escape the landlord by shooting him, then escaping from there by breaking a door down and getting to the next sublevel, but this hasn't always worked. The next sublevel is sublevel 2, which is a huge forest blanketed in snow. And lucky for you, this sublevel is one of, if not, the safest sublevel in the Shady Gray. It's also the most explored one too. Now it doesn't make any sense that this level is covered in snow because it's actually hot all the time here. In fact, it's so hot that people have literally ceased to exist because of sunburn and sun exposure or heat stroke. Almond water can stop these effects though. So just make sure you bring some with you. This level appears to have a sun that shines all the time and snow never melts, even if it's getting direct exposure to the sun and the heat. Since the level is black and white, like all the levels here, it's literally impossible to tell if you're sunburned unless you feel it, since you can't see color in any grayscale place. There are places to not get exposed to the sun though, like under the trees in the forest, or the small meg base that's located here. The base is made up of three people and they've explored most of this part of the level. 
Other than the snow melting and the direct heat and sunlight, there's nothing really special about this level except for the one entity that lives here called the Fallen Angels. They look like humans with huge black wings and robes, and their body looks like they've been injured with holes in them, but they claimed that they faded away and that's how they turned out to be a fallen angel. It's assumed that they were people at one point, but that's not confirmed since they never want to talk about how they came to be that way. They're passive and they will talk to you if you confront them, but they get very aggressive if you mention level 71, so don't. Getting out of the sublevel is simple, you just have to ask a fallen angel to send you on to the next sublevel, and then they'll throw you through the ground right into sublevel 3. So now we're at the fourth sublevel, which is sublevel 3 because we started at 0. It's confusing. This is the weirdest sublevel in the Shady Grey. It's an infinite black and white ocean with occasional islands. But the water here has clocks floating in it. And these clocks have some sort of time altering abilities within them. And they all do different things, but more on that in a second. The water of the ocean is very corrosive and toxic, and it seems to be like a weird mixture of normal distilled water and motor oil or mercury, okay? Meg has found four different types of clocks floating in the ocean. Analog, digital, grandfather clocks, and even watches. Now remember when I said that the clocks can alter time? Well, it typically happens when you touch them. Analog clocks themselves are the safest to touch because they'll send you to level 2, or to the next sublevel, but the analog clocks are really rare to find. Digital clocks, however, are extremely dangerous. If you pick one up, you'll be sent to level 195, which is a level full of dangerous, mysterious properties. The good news is that the digital clocks are also pretty rare. Now, normal watches, like you are on your wrist, are really weird. They're considered an offensive weapon on this level because if you put one on your wrist, you can point your hand and watch forward towards a person and it'll send that person to their last day alive. Nice. This could mean instantly unaliving them, or it can mean sending them to their demise by getting attacked by an entity. There's only one reported case of someone living through a watch attack, and it's because somehow this dude got sent to be unalived by a wretch, and he escaped the wretch, and he was missing for over a year before Meg found him. The grandfather clocks, you know those huge ones, do a really weird aging thing. If you throw someone onto a floating grandfather clock, they'll either age up to an old person or de-age to a baby. This specific sublevel of Shady Grey is virtually impossible to set up an outpost since there is constant watch wars happening between the people that live here and Meg themselves. Meg barely even got a base up here and they're under constant attack by the natives of this land. There are also speedboats on this level as well, but most of them are with Meg or the small groups, so that fact was kind of useless now that I think about it. So the last stable sublevel is sublevel 4, which is the fifth level. You can only get here by touching an analog clock on the last sublevel, which will teleport you here, and you'll land in a river. The water is safe to touch, but not to consume, and the rivers are surrounded on both sides by a huge city and skyscrapers. The city area looks really similar to level 11, except it's in the black and white grayscale, obviously. But a lot of the buildings here are glitchy and distorted. You can only enter the skyscrapers by breaking in because the doors are locked, but that's not a good idea since they're literally infested with aggressive entities. The streets inside the city are crawling with armed facelings that will attempt to mug you if they even see you. You can make them docile though if you give them almond water. The mangled entity is also very common here, and they're always looking for prey. But the armed facelings and the mangled are not the only problems here. The temperatures change really quickly, and natural disasters like blizzards or tornadoes can happen at random, so it's constantly in environmental danger too. It's also dark all the time, so. There's no purposeful way you can escape this level, you just have to accidentally no-clip. Cool. So, the next part is the last documented part on the wikidot, and it's called the Lost Hope. This is the part of the Shady Grey where stability itself just stops. It's impossible to escape, and it'll drain all the hope you have left if you had any to begin with. The walls of the Lost Hope are wobbly and distorted, and pretty much anyone who makes it here doesn't make it out. After this, there's virtually nothing documented except Too Far and The End, which don't have any words, they're just pictures. So yeah, that is the massive explanation of the Shady Grey sublevel conglomerate. It's a weird conglomeration of sublevels that don't make any sense, but they're crazy, and I think they're pretty well written, actually. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Leave suggestions on what levels you want me to go over in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.